2010-11 season was supposed to be a rebuilding year for the Air Force hockey team. A disappointing loss in the conference semifinals the previous season appeared to be the end of a fantastic four-year run. But an infusion of new talent proved to be just the spark this team needed to reclaim its place atop the Atlantic Hockey Association. For the second straight year, the Falcons lost their first four games, including a loss to last place AIC on the home ice. And despite a 12 to nothing romp for their first win the following night, a lackluster performance the next Friday had them looking up from a one in five hole. It's just like, oh boy, what, what now, what, what next, like, uh, what else could go wrong? It's really frustrating because you begin to wonder uh, what kind of team you truly have and uh, it's tough for the psyche and the confidence of the rest of the team. Kind of a shock to us, I guess, especially as seniors, knowing, knowing what we've done uh, to that team in the past and then getting beat by them. It was kind of like, wow, we better figure stuff out. The next night, Air Force hosted rival RIT. The Tigers were coming off a trip to the NCAA Frozen Four and were eager to reclaim the league title. Tigers up with it. There's a shot, and RIT leads 3-2. Who wins the faceoff? RIT trying to clear it, but it held in, and there's a shot. Tip in front. Walsh shot the tip out front. Beats Roper in, and we're tied again at three apiece. On the other side, a one-timer. This is Cruz, and he misses wide. From behind the net, centering pass. Cruz trying to stuff it in, and does! Cruz or Thomas, they were right there, whacking and hacking at it. Ropinen goes down, the puck goes in, and Air Force leads for the first time tonight. Mathis has it, crowd counting it down. It's loose, it's centerized, and Air Force is going to win it! Final 4-3 Falcons! Crosstown rival Colorado College came into the Cadet Ice Arena next, and despite forging a second period lead, the Tigers turned out to be too much. Then came a date with the third ranked Yale Bulldogs. And there off the faceoff, Falcons lose the draw, scramble in front, shot just gave Yale a 3 0 lead. They win the draw, get it back to the far point. Cycle it to the near side to Mathis, tees it up, shoots, score, Air Force! And almost halfway through period number three, Falcons down a couple of goals. Air Force wins the faceoff, coming back with the puck the other way. Weisgarber passes it to himself, comes low, shoots off the back of the skate and in. It's a 3-2 game. Center ice to Fabian. Fabian, a little touch pass ahead. Here's a rush in. This is Cruz. Shot out front. Save. Rebound. Put back and we're tied. Air Force looking for the go-ahead score. Cruz will rim it around. Cut off on the other end by Duck and Duke, rather, taken away by Air Force. Here's a centering pass. Shot out front. Score. And the Falcons take a 4-3 lead. Crowd counting it down with the puck. Bulldog center a pass out front. Big scramble in front of the goal. Cleared by Air Force. And the Falcons upset the number three team in the nation. It was you know, a big confidence booster, like, hey, we really can do this. You know, they're supposed to be that good. And, you know, we came out and beat them. So, yeah, we can do this and we can play with pretty much any team in the country. We just have to put our minds to it and come out and play well. Momentum helped the Falcons coast to six more conference points before Christmas break. And after the time off, they picked right back up at the jar in Bentley. And overtime underway here at the jar. Into the Bentley end it goes, Falcons hold it in. 3-2 in overtime, 13 seconds in to the overtime period. And Kleisinger with a nice pass ahead to McKenzie. McKenzie, two on one, McKenzie's got the puck, he shoots and he scores! Burnett in the circle, spins around, centers, broken up by Bentley, the puck is tipped in, it scores! Air Force, and there's your game! Air Force, three, Bentley too. But just when this team seemed to have the season under control, the road became bumpy. Three points were lost on the road against Sacred Heart, plus a loss to Army, and ties at UConn and with Canisius at home drug the Falcons down to the lower half of the standings. Things didn't look good as they headed to Rochester for a series with RIT, and it didn't get much better Friday night. Mitchell gets the puck back, centers. or for the first 12 minutes on Saturday. Got a loose puck coming in on 12th with a shot. Scored, that's RIT. 
have it. We'll get it to Lynch. He shoots. He scores. And Reynolds up with it for RIT. Down the goal line. Shoots. Shot from there, rejected by Air Force. Favitt holds it in, sends it across. Saraceno gets it out front, and it's four nothing. I remember sitting on the bench. I think it was 12 minutes into the game, and they scored their fourth goal. And I'm thinking to myself, looking at each, we're looking at each other like this could be 10, 12, 0 if we don't get it together. RIT was hammering us, and it's embarrassing to lose to the team at all, just because it's such a big rival, and. It was just one of those things where, all right, boys, let's just chip away at this, see what happens. And there's always going to be a lot of frustration with when you're down 4 nothing after the first period, but um, eventually people picked up their heads and we got back into it. Get it back to the point to Mantis. Mantis down the shot, shoots, tip out front, score, Air Force. Falcons win the draw, they get it to McKenzie, McKenzie shoots, and it finds the back of the net. Now a long stretch pass, Cruz, breakaway, shoots, and he scores! And we've got a 4-3 hockey game, ladies and gentlemen. Kirby will bounce it off the back wall to Burnett. Low on the goal line, centered. Lamarouche shoots, and he scores! And we are tied! Well, the Falcons turn it over at the blue line. Murphy has it, gets it out front. Shot, score! Hartley makes Air Force play. Burnett still gets his, his stick on it, sends it back to Mathis. Mathis shoots, tip in, out front, score! That's Kyle DeLore! Broken up by Weisgarber and Kozlak. Burt gets it back. He centers. Shot try. There's a table with a stick save. Speared it away and steered it into the corner to his right. From out of the corner, Norris puts a shot. Capel makes a kick save. And it's going to end up in a 5-5 tie. And how about those last two saves by Stephen Capel to get Air Force a point tonight? It was just, I think from that point on, guys are like, wow, you know what, guys, we put together an effort like we did the last two periods against RIT. We can beat anybody. And I think guys finally, after a few instances of that earlier in the season, that was the one that I think guys finally, it's, it's sunk in and guys are like, all right, we can do this now. It's, uh, and it was just kind of a mindset that was permanent after that. The tie at arguably the toughest place to play in Atlantic hockey spurred this team into action. With six games remaining against the rest of the upper half, it was time to put up or shut up. Murphy with the turnover, shot Torf with a huge save. Ahead for Birch, Birch with Kozlak, Kozlak with the shot, he scores! Hit for Cruz who one times it, looking for a deflection, deflected in behind the net, centering pass out front, and that's John Cruz! Back the other way, Makulki, Rister beats the Polsky, 150 to go in the game. Colonials with the puck in the Air Force, and they come in, Torf with the shot, Torf with the save, Torf in the splits! The goaltender for Robert Morris, Ostergaard is on the bench, Long break, picks it up, there's a bad pass, taken away by Air Force, sent ahead, and with the puck is Thomas, empty net, Weisgarber buries it! Back to the blue line, held in by Walsh, Walsh sets up, tip, up, front, score, Derek Burnett, Air Force, 3-2! Winning five of those last six kept the Falcons out of the one-game portion of the playoffs, but the quarterfinals brought the only team with playoff success against them to Colorado Springs, Sacred Heart. The Pioneers had won on the road the previous weekend, and they would put a scare into the men in blue on Friday night. Pioneers have it from behind the net. Shot, save, shot, rebound, put back, score. Sacred Heart feeds to the blue line. Near side to Alex Stewart. Stewart sends it to Knowlton. Knowlton down the slot, knocked down by Torf. Rebound, put back in, and we are tied. And now Yelovich out of the box, back to five on five. Centering pass for Fabian. Fabian, touch pass ahead, score, Air Force. That's Tony Thomas. Here for Air Force, three on three, going the other way. There's a shot, score, Kyle DeLaurel, 7-5, Air Force. We were just thankful that we got that win and that we could just end the series the next night. So I think everyone came in a lot more focused on that Saturday um, with what we needed to do and where we needed to tighten things up. I'm sure it was really fun for the fans to watch that game, but that wasn't a Falcon hockey to say. Um, the next night we came out and it was much more, we played strong defensively, scored, capitalized when we got chances, and we didn't give up the chances we gave up on Friday night. Saturday was an entirely different story. Kenzie sends it back to the high slot, down the slot, deflected out front, score, Air Force. Near the blue line and 
at the blue line with the puck is DeLong. DeLong comes down the slot. He takes a shot. Saved by Torp. Another shot. Another save by Torp right down the slot. Played off the far wall. Shot in again. Legato makes the save. Air Force scrambling in front. Falcons score! With the goaltender leaves the net and will play it for the Pioneers. Gives it to Mitchell Stretcher. Turns it over. Three on one for Air Force. Shot! There it is! Exclamation point! As Air Force retrieves the puck deep in its own end, here's DeLauro to Cruz. Cruz will wind up! Cruz will shoot back of the net, and it's 4 nothing Air Force. And the Falcons get it done, punch the ticket. We're heading back to Western New York and the Atlantic Hockey Semifinals. A fifth straight trip to the Atlantic Hockey Final Four in Rochester, New York was unprecedented as was what the Falcons were about to accomplish. The semifinal opponent was Holy Cross. Going into Holy Cross, I was, I was nervous. They were arguably the hottest team in the country. I think they were unbeaten in 11 or 12 games. Personally, I mean, I was a little bit nervous because we'd always play, the, they always play us tough. It's always a really tight game. We can go either, anyway. They kind of play like uh, we play, very good defensively, tough to play against, back check hard. Um, capitalize when they get chances, so it was it was an interesting matchup. 47 seconds into period number three. Holy Cross wins the draw in the slot. There's a shot, scramble out front, put back, good, and Holy Cross takes a 2-1 lead. Eric Voss put in a rebound. It's going to be picked up by Mathis, turns it over. There's a shot saved by Torp, leaves a rebound. Nobody got there in time, knocked out of the air by Roy, the goaltender. Roy sends it into the corner. Falcon center from there. Far circle, Chuck Lamaroux buries it, and we're tied at two piece. Lamaroux to DeLauro. Three on three, going the other way. DeLauro trailing is Lamaroux. Lamaroux with the shot. Save! Air Force, Lamaroux, 3-2, Falcons. Holy Cross trying to hold it in on the far side. Weisgarber has it. Three seconds, two seconds, it's over! Air Force and RIT in the championship game tomorrow night. In what many feel was a fitting end of the season, the top two seeds played for the championship and a berth in the NCAA tournament. And let's just call it a not so friendly atmosphere. It was awesome. I mean, the games just at uh, the Ritter Arena, their normal rink during the year is crazy and uh, kind of double the fans, double the capacity of the rink there in the lower bowl. and. Uh, so everything was magnified. I mean, bigger stage, uh, playing for a trip to NCAA tournament. Not only are you facing, you know, the number one team in the conference, so you got a big game to play, but you're also facing 3,000 RIT fans who, you know, you walk out and it's just a sea of orange around the whole entire building. And a carnival-like atmosphere here tonight at the Blue Cross Arena. Tee it up and go, but it's taken away on the other side by the Tigers. With it is Murphy. Murphy gets it to Dakota. Dakota comes in, shot, steered wide. Greg Noyes from the near point. Now it's picked up by the Tigers again. Another shot, that's Kornakia. Well, Deloro gives it to Burnett. Burnett along the half wall to Glamoureux in the slot. One times it, saved by Matt Allure. Dumped in by Ben Lynch. Centered from the corner, shot out front, saved by Torp. Leaves a rebound, another shot, another save out front. And a first period comes to a close. No score still in the Air Force end. Behind the net, the Sellers trying to clear it. There's a shot out front, Torf to save. Torf down, makes another save. Torf will leave it for Kirby. Kirby goes around a defender. Air Force with the man advantage tries again. Kirby at the blue line, Kirby circle. Kirby goes in on Matt Allure, tries to take the shot. It's put back in, one nothing Air Force. Taken away by RIT, long pass, here's a breakaway. Coming in is gonna be McReynolds. McReynolds shoots, Torf makes the save. It's in the corner to Torf's right. From out of the corner, there's a shot. Torf makes a kick save. Right now, the Falcons lead RIT one Nothing. RIT has it with the puck. Kolovecchia goes in behind the net. Wraparound. Save. Made by Torf on the slot. Rebound. Another shot. Saved by Torf. Empty net over here on the RIT end. Sent into the far corner. Falcons trying to clear it. RIT trying to keep it in. Coming in on Torf with a shot. No. And they pile into Jason Torf. It's at center ice right now. Burke sends it in. Two seconds. One second. Air Force wins it. One nothing 
R-I-T-R-I-P, and the Falcons are going to the NCAA tournament. Unbelievable. This team just will not quit. Air Force gets number 20 of the season, eight in a row, and they're playing next week. That's all that counts. And it's Air Force knocking off the defending champs and going back to the NCAA tournament. For the fourth time in five years, the Falcons had earned a trip to the NCAA tournament, an accomplishment unheard of for a service academy team. This time, the opponent was a familiar one. The Yale Bulldogs came in as the number one seed overall, but backing down isn't in the Air Force vocabulary. We're not gonna win this game in the first period. Let's make sure we don't lose it. We wanna get to that third period. Enjoy the journey, play your game. All of the pressure in this game is on Yale. They're the number one seed in this regional, number one overall seed in the tournament, basically playing in their home city in front of their home fans. They've got all the pressure on them. Brock Little almost gets a takeaway. Now the Bulldogs got something going, but broken up nicely by Tim Kirby on Corbin A. Duick gets control. Here's Augustino at the blue line. Augustino trying to come in right side. Hope checked away from him. Falcons get a turnover. Held in far side by Little. Little to Matzak. And there's a turnover by Air Force. Nice play. Kozlak. Kozlak. Can, can he get around Matzak? No, he takes the shot. Getting to it first was Peel, but he couldn't clear it. From the far wall, shot in. Scramble in front of the net. There's a turnaround shot by Birch. Ricochet picked up far side by the Bulldogs to try to break in. They come in two against one, and there's a shot, but broken up nicely down to the ice. I think that was Mike Walsh in the Air Force end. In the corner, centering pass, shot, knocked down by Torf, left to rebound, but it's cleared. No score. The opening period here tonight in Bridgeport, Connecticut, coming through the neutral zone. Air Force three on two. Now it's a three on three. There's a shot, knocked down out front by Rondo. Clear ahead for O'Neill. O'Neill with the blue line. O'Neill top of the circle, shoot, kick, save, Jason Torf. Played off the back wall by the Bulldogs. Yale keeping it in, keeping the pressure on. There's a shot and a score tipped in out front by Brian O'Neill. 12.32 left in the second. It's 1-0 Bulldogs. Timer on the goal line. Timer, centers, man coming down the slot. Shot by Air Force over the head of Rondo in behind the net. Right out to the blue line. Sent in behind the net again. Fabian picks it up there. Rather, Birch. Birch comes out, wrap around, tried to stuff it in, and does! And we're tied at one apiece. What a great play by Sean Birch. A couple of Air Force players overskated. The Bulldogs come up with the loose puck. Centering pass out front. There's O'Neill. O'Neill shot, save made by Torf. Both teams come up with a goal in the second period. Yale early, Air Force late. Burnett. Chris crosses with Lamaru. Burnett still has it, far circle. To Lamaru, turn, shoots, save, made by Rondo. Near side, Cahill. Cahill trying to get around Sellers, can't do it. Puck comes free, taken away by Matzek, sent in. Centering pass out front, shot, saved by Torf. He came out on his angle, glove save as he pulled it down. And there's a turnover in the neutral zone. Kirby has it, Kirby comes in, Kirby shoots. Rondo makes the save, leaves a rebound, and oh, a quick whistle there for Yale. Miller goes around one defender, another defender comes in, still has the puck, backhand shot, Torf knocks it down. Getting a stick on it, Sellers. Sellers feeding Kleisinger to Weisgarber. McCulkey walks in, shot saved by Rondo and a big collision in front of the net. Turnover, this is Kleisinger. Kleisinger out front, feeds Weisgarber, backhand shot, Rondo makes the save, puck loose along the goal line, picked up by Yale. And that'll be the end of regulation here in Bridgeport. Guess what? We're going to overtime. Next goal wins it. It's back the other way, dumps it into the Air Force end. Comes off the wall, funny, it's loose out in front. There's a shot, saved by, by Torp. Burnett gives to McKenzie. McKenzie right down the blue line, takes a shot. Rondo reaches up, glove save, no rebounds. Gets it back, Matt just sends it across. Two on two for Air Force. Centering pass, McCulkey shot, kick save, made by Rondo. Weisgarber picks it up, Weisgarber feeds McCulkey. Three on two, McCulkey feeds White. There's a shot, Rondo makes another blocker save and rebound picked up by Yale. For the Bulldogs, this is Mason. Mason up the left side, Mason at the blue line shoots it right into a defender, blocked by Paul Weisgarber. Mason gets it back, Mason sends it across. This is Jaskowiak, hit shot, knocked down by Torf. Another rebound, knocked down by Torf, put back in. Yale wins the game. It's devastating. He got the wind knocked out of you a little bit. I stepped onto the ice after that, and I was just looking at the replay board, and they never showed a replay. 
it's just weird because it's just a sudden deflating moment that it's over, but it happens. Three minutes, 16 seconds into overtime, and Air Force had dominated that 315 right before that. Falcons had a couple of great scoring chances, just an unfortunate finish to this one for Air Force. While many on the outside would say this team had overachieved by taking Yale to the brink of elimination, to a man, they all felt they could have done so much more. You kind of got to look at both sides of it. I mean, obviously, we, were, we have been fortunate enough to have the success to get there three times in the last four years, and which is awesome. Obviously, it's a pretty good feat in itself, but I don't know, not, not completely satisfied, I guess you could say. As with any successful season, the awards piled up. Junior defenseman Scott Mathis was named first team Atlantic Hockey. He was the team's top scoring defenseman with 27 points, which was ranked second in the league, 15th in the country among defensemen. Senior forward Jacques Lamoureux was named second team. He led Air Force with 44 points and 24 goals. He led the nation in power play goals with 13 and was 10th in the nation with five game winners. Junior defenseman Tim Kirby was named third team Atlantic Hockey. He was second on the team with 23 points from the blue line and third in the league in points by a defender. Freshman Jason Torf made the all-rookie team. His 3.04 goals against and .903 saves percentage were tops in the league among freshman tenders. His 16 wins second most by any newcomer in the country. Adam McKenzie also made the all-rookie team. His 18 points were the best by a freshman defenseman in Atlantic hockey, and his plus eight mark was the second best on the team. A main reason for the Falcons' success this season was an unbelievable knack to win the close ones. Of the 20 wins on the year, 12 came by a single goal. 11 times Air Force found itself behind in the third period, but still managed to salvage points. Beyond that, two games came down to the last second of regulation. Jacques Lamoureux beat Holy Cross with .3 seconds on the clock and a month later pulled out a tie against Sacred Heart with .6 seconds left. A team like that will keep fans in the seats for the duration no matter what the score. And speaking of the fans, the Cadet Ice Arena continued to pack them in. 14 games were sold out this season and the 18 home game average was above capacity at 2,668 fans per contest. That 108% of capacity is the highest in the country among teams that played all their home games on their own ice. Unfortunately, the Falcons have to say goodbye to a group of outstanding seniors. The class of 2011 won four league titles, played in three NCAA tournaments, and won a school record 85 games. Matt Becker showed his leadership early on this season, scoring a nifty power play goal against RIT, leading the way to victory. Blake Page also claimed a bit of the spotlight, getting the game winner in overtime on Friday night on the road against Bentley. Sean Birch not only scored a second NCAA goal against Yale, he may have claimed the handiest goal of the season against Canisius. Scott Kozlak was a terror on the penalty kill all season long and got hot down the stretch with 10 points in his last 12 games. Brad Sellers was perhaps the most underrated of Falcon defenders. His career plus 45 is the best ever under coach Frank Serratori. Another player who flew below the radar was Derek Burnett. He led the team with 27 assists this season and was second on the team with 35 points. He closes his career 30th on the career points list. His 84 career assists are the most by a Falcon since Eric Ean ended his All-American career with 93. Despite being left off the all-conference teams, Burnett was second in the league in assists and sixth in points. With a late-season goal at Mercyhurst, Jacques Lamoureux put his name atop the all-time goal-scoring list in Atlantic Hockey games with 59, a feat he accomplished by playing in 23 less games than the next highest competitor. Lamoureux also eclipsed the 40-point mark for the third straight season the first Falcon to do so in 29 years. As a class, I mean, we had two classes that knew what it took to win a championship here. And if we didn't do it this year, there'd be four guys left on the team that understood what it took. And so it would have been real tough for those guys to integrate what a championship team needs to do when you only have four of them. But now you look at the program and, and now we got three classes coming back next year and you're gonna have to mold what a nine or 10 freshmen coming in and integrate them into the way things work 
and that's much easier than trying to get uh, you know, 20 guys to do it. And I, I'm just happy that we could leave that legacy for those guys. The 2010-11 season may go down as a pivotal one when all is said and done. Instead of settling for less, this team reclaimed their spot on top of Atlantic hockey. And hockey also set itself apart from all other sports at the academy, having won a record four outright league championships. With more hard work and the same determination, the bar can be set even higher in the years to come.